the lifter of our head, our shield, our buckler, our Jesus, mighty name, we have given thanks. In Jesus, mighty name, we have given thanks. Shortly before we sit down, I want us to take these songs. Everybody testify, you are good. You are good, Jehovah, you are good. Everybody testify. You are good, Jehovah. You, everybody testify you. You are good. You are good, Jehovah. You are good. Everybody testify you are good. You are good, Jehovah. Father, we testify this morning that you are good. We testify this morning that you are faithful. We testify this morning that you are loving. We testify this morning that you are kind. Thank you, Lord, because your word says, even before we were formed in our mother's womb, you knew us. Before we came into 2024, you were already in this year for us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to gather. We thank you for the privilege to call unto you. Lord, we declare that in this place today, your blessing will reign on us. Your presence will be manifest online and on site in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Sammy says, I was glad when they say unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Anyone who is glad, shout hallelujah. If you are glad to be in his presence this morning, shout hallelujah. All right, thank you. You may please have your seat. Thank you for joining us again this Sunday, the 20, the January 20, 2024. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. I would like to quickly encourage us this morning that in order to gain relevance, as our pastor will be teaching us today, I think one key thing that we need to do is to seek first the kingdom of God. Is to recognize that our number one happy place is in the presence of God. Amen? That the number one happy place that you can always take yourself into that you should always seek to be in is in the church, is in the presence of God. As a matter of fact, uh, I think it was in 2018 that they did the study in Harvard, and they realized that when people go to church regularly, they have self-control. They live a healthy life. They conquer depression. They are more optimistic. Amen. That is why, and, and I, I, I am very much in support of that study, even if it is not here. From where I'm coming from, is working. Because it could, it could have been from worse to worse. Because sometimes, when I was still younger, I was telling a, an adult that, why is there too many churches around us? And he said, let's thank God that there are churches. 
Because if there are, there are no churches like this, fine. They are the fake and the original ones. <laughs> but if there are no churches like this, imagine what would have happened. Imagine what would have been. When people say, with what we have gone through, the reason why we are still standing with what we have gone through is because we have realized that our happy place is in the presence of God. It's because we seek him regularly, not just one off. Like I was saying to my wife this morning that there is nothing you want to do for God that is convenient. Amen? Is coming to church convenient this morning? No, somebody should testify. <laughs> Praise God. Because we, most of us come from miles. The weather is not smiling and all that. But because this is where you get power, because the benefits here are enormous, I would like to encourage us that this year we should not please with this our number one happy place. It is in the presence of God that we'll be able to get to high points in 2024. It is when we seek to be in church that we can say that, yes, there will be light bulb moments in 2024. Amen. So as pastor comes up this morning, please, I want us to have our hearts open. Have our hearts open. The world will be coming in different sizes and dimensions. Yours might be a, a verse of the Bible that is going to come up with. Yours might be a word, a sentence. I want us to be alert. I want our hearts to be open. So with Jesus' joy, please join me in welcoming our own PD. <laughs> Thank you. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. How are we doing this morning? I'm happy to see you. Are you happy to see me too? <laughs> Praise God. Ramnath, how are you doing? Your shin is shining from a distance, man. Praise God. Ewa is doing a good job. Can we appreciate Ewa this, this week? Praise God. Even though he has not finished his job, at least you can see this. You can see this. And um, what, else, what else do you do again this week? Okay, 7 a.m. we went to go and pick some of this, but at least let's appreciate it. Huh? It's good, to be, it's good to be, okay, don't let me say that one. <laughs> Praise God. We're not done yet, but we are always grateful to God for his mercy and his grace over our lives. And we believe that God is going to help us more in Jesus' mighty name. At least settling down in this auditorium, we are almost there, not there. The light needs to be cushioned up. We're not done. Then uh, we need to do the signage. So we're expecting um, a season of um, more publicity, which I believe Bayo is doing for us. How many of you enjoy a time of prayer this morning? Praise God. Every morning, 6 a.m., we wanted to make it 5, but I know 5 is not uh, 6 a.m. And if it's possible to wake up the children, I those going to school, please let's pray. 6 a.m., increase is coming, and we have to load the heavens. And when I'm talking about increase, the definition you give to you is according to your need. Mm, I know if I say increase now, somebody say, mm, mm. Pastor, you spoke in. I've been waiting. You know, but increase is coming. At the scent of water is the word for the year. And what God keeps saying is that what you need most is what I will supply in your life. So what do you need the most? May the Lord supply it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that this year you will not be put to shame. Your amen is not born again. I said, this says you will not be put to shame. You will live in comfort. You will live in boldness. You will live in joy in the name of Jesus. And your life will be resourceful in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let me see if I have an announcement before we do. We want to start a new series today. And, uh, tell your neighbor, tighten your seatbelt. <laughs> oh, tighten your seatbelt. Praise God. I'm not even sure. Okay. So, contention for relevance. Otne, let's, let's even see where we can even use this. Otne, come, come and put this on smarts. Let's see if we can even use it. 
this is his influence church and by the grace of god the guy doesn't want to show on uh, this <laughs> this is the call this is and what we do here is not just what God is doing with your life. P. Dan, can you put a little bit of power on this mic? It's not just what God is doing in your life, but what God is doing through her lives. Hallelujah. And I want to just use this to paint a little picture for us as we begin to dive into some of the things that I believe God will want us to discuss, want us to discuss in 2020. For I want to just use this as a foundation. Some of the things we'll be discussing in the next four or five weeks might not necessarily, might not necessarily be um, what you not really know what you expect, but it's going to be give us more responsibilities. The benefit is enormous, but the picture I will paint more, it will be the picture of the responsibility. And I want us to understand. Did you get it? If we can't get it, put it back and let's just go. Praise God. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. We are honored to your believing that you're going to help us to assimilate the truth as we begin a series this season. God, we ask for your mercy. We ask for your mercy and the comfort of the Spirit that you will, in any mighty way, cause also God to experience abundance of grace in a way that will be able to stand for that which is a body in your heart for this season. Let everyone be useful. Let everyone be useful in your cancer and your purpose. And let your name be glorified. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. I want to go with me to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. I'm going to be reading from verse 3 to... I'm going to be reading from verse 3 to verse 12, verse 13. 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 3 through to verse 12. Hallelujah. 1 Kings chapter 18, from verse 3 through to verse, verse 13 or verse 12. If I can jump some verses, but let's do it. Are we there? The Bible says, and Hayab had someone Obadiah. Somebody say Obadiah. His palace administrator. Obadiah was a devout believer in the Lord. Verse 4, while Jezebel was killing of the lost prophet, Obadiah has taken a hundred prophets and hidden them in two caves, 15 each, and has supplied them with food and water. Verse 7, I'm jumping now. Verse 7, as Obadiah was walking along, Elijah met him. Obadiah recognized him, bowed down to the ground and said, Is it really you? My Lord Elijah. Yes, he, re he replied. Go tell your master, Elijah is here. Somebody say audacity. Verse 9, he said, what have I done wrong? <laughs> Ask about that. That you are handing your servant over to here to be put to death. Now that was the king. is a no-nonsense man. As surely as the Lord your God lives, there is not a nation or kingdom where my master has not sent someone to look for you. And whenever a nation or kingdom claims you are not there, it made them swear they could not find you. Verse 11. But now you tell me to go to the master and say, Elijah is here. I don't know where the spirit of the Lord may carry you when I leave you. If I go and tell him and he doesn't find you, he will kill me. Yet, hire your servant I've worshipped the Lord since my youth. Haven't you heard, my Lord, what I did while Jezebel were killing the prophets of the Lord? I hid a hundred of the lost prophets in two caves, fifty in each, supply them with food and water. Praise God. Let me see if I can read one verse. Verse 14 and 15. And now you tell me to go to my master and say, Elijah is here. He will kill me. Elijah said, as the Lord Almighty lives, whom I serve, I will surely present myself to her today. Hallelujah. Contention for relevance. When you hear the word contention, it, 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 it indicates a desire to want to be in control, to contend, a strong desire to want to be in control, to want to be in control. When you hear the word contention for relevance, a desire to want to be in control. 
Hallelujah. That someone can come into HIC for the first time today and he says, hey, I want to be the pastor. Whether there's call out, no call out, ordination, no ordination. And say, whatever it costs, I want to be the one holding the mic. It's contention <laughs> for all of us. It also means an act of competing in order to win something or to achieve a position of leadership. It's an act of competing. Or competing. There's something going on in the body of Christ that we need to pay attention to, that we need to be aware of. And that's why we're bringing this subject matter. So the title of the message, the, 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 the title of the series is Contention for Relevance. But for part one, the title is The Increase of Obadiahs. The Increase of what? Obadiahs. In other words, the Lord is saying through the voice of his servant today that Obadiahs will increase and they will be blessed and they will grow in impact, making a difference in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I wanted to paint an image in your mind. That's why I wanted to use that word. Image in your mind. To know that the, when God created the heavens, the first thing he did is to give life to human beings. Life not just in the physical, but life also in the spiritual, which is the life giving life of Christ, to be able to live according to the pattern of the will of God. Um, all of us know, Devnil, that sin, deception came, right? The goal of deception is to derail us from the original intention of God. And deception leads to sin. Are you with me? And the Bible says the wages of sin is what? But one of the major things we should understand is that when Jesus came, he came after sin. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 31, the Bible says, You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. Come on, say, I'm forgiving. In other words, there is no, it's just a mere religiosity for someone to come to church and they are screaming, Sin, 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 you're a sinner, you're a sinner. No. Anybody that is operating in sin right now is because of knowledge gap. Jesus has dealt with it. You don't agree with that? Have you ever done something wrong as a believer, done something wrong before, and you ask God for forgiveness, and you could see practically that that wound, that pain, that imagination dry up off your mind by the reason of the blood of Jesus? It's not a joke. This is real. We have been forgiven. Did you hear what I'm saying? And we are, cannot be condemned. We have been forgiven. That's not a license to be doing something wrong, but we are just saying that when it comes to sin and the power of death, Jesus has taken care of it. Praise God. This the first week of this year, God said, He said, there is, he said, he said, one of the things that we use to unify the body of Christ is the power of faith. In the course of the year, I will talk about, there is a sound about faith that God is releasing across the body of Christ, not the definition of receiving and giving that some of us are used to. He said, but one of the reasons I'm going to use faith, one of the things I will use faith to do in the body of Christ is that number one, I will use faith to take the body of Christ to a place of unity. That when somebody say have faith, they understand what it means. When we say one faith, according to Ephesians chapter 4, it will be for all. Having the same perspective, there is no difference because faith is faith universally. He said, but another thing that we use that faith to do is to make people to live long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In our generation, I'm telling you, people will live comfortably into their 90s and hundreds. Stand oh, come on now. Standing with wrong. Are you with me? I made that statement to you to let you know that not just sin was dead with, death too was dead with. The same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is that if the same spirit dwells in you, will he not with it vitalize your mortal body? You are not sick in 2024. You are not tired in 2024. The fear of death is broken off your life because Jesus sorted it out. He said the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, in other words, the, God is the giver of life. Jesus is the life. Holy Ghost is the dispenser of that life. Did you hear what I said? God is the giver of life. Jesus is that life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He said, but the Holy Spirit is the dispenser of that life. 
Even when Jesus was on the cross, the Bible said the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Somebody was responsible for that. Are you with me? And he said to me, he said, the same way the Holy Spirit came to Simeon, he said, you will not die until you see this son. And the guy was begging, I want to die. He said, no, you won't die. According to the mandate of the Spirit upon your life, you will live until Jesus shows up in the flesh. Be confident, my brothers and sisters, that you will live long. I said that to tell you that G God gives life and do sin, take care of death, so that we can have a good life and eternity. He said, but there is a gap. The gap between sin and death is there is a system in the world in which the enemy has created or programmed to keep people perpetually outside the will of God, even though they are alive. Are you tracking with me? That between sin and death, there is a system the enemy put in place to ensure that everybody is living outside the scope of the will of God, even though they are alive. And that's what we saw in this scripture, <laughs> is a Jezebel spirit. I know in the body of Christ, when we talk about Jezebel, you're looking for somebody that has makeup. Uh, <laughs> and long gear. Even too, we taught it, and nails. Even too, when we started, we thought, hey, mm. then you see nails like that, we bought the color. Ah, there she's one of them. <laughs> hmm? You must understand that Jezebel is not a person. It's a system and a spirit that can decide to come in any gender. And unfortunately, it start, she started as a female gender. But it's not just a female gender. When we get to a time, are you with me? I need attention. I need attention. For you to understand, well, listen, there is war. There is war. We need to understand. We need to understand that, look, being a puppet is not the most important thing now. Erasing disciples among the nations. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there is war. So, Bible says, in this first Kings chapter 18, you will see three systems of operation that, that, that happens in those days in Israel, that still happens today. There is definitely in the present, in any nation, there is what we call the legislative, we have the executive, and we have what? The judiciary. So, the responsibility of the priests in the Old Testament is to interpret the law, the teaching priests. Are you with me? The legislation, the legislation aspect of, of, of Israel then, which is what happened, uh, are the prophets. The prophets are the ones that download the counsel of God and say to the nation, this is the will of God, in which the priest now breaks down a malleable, understandable truth in which everybody can assimilate. But the responsibility of the executive is to ensure that whatever the Lord is saying is what comes to pass. They execute it. They enforce it. Implement it. I need to. I need to put on your imagination cap, because now in the scripture we have said we have read there is nothing called the priest of the Lord in this place because they have been shut down. The way judiciary is on country does not have a voice. You understand what? If you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. The only people that God can rely on is the prophet and the executive. But Bible says there is a king that rose up, anointed by God to be a king, and a woman came into his life. Her name is Jezebel. I did a Google search. Let me even say this clearly: Jezebel was not known to be beautiful. In case you saw one that is so beautiful, ah, the more they are beautiful, if no, 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 no. If oh goodness, don't let me jump. In fact, when the last day of Jezebel came, that Jehu came in to want to destroy her, the Bible said when she looked from the window that Jehu was coming, the Bible said she painted her face. If the face is naturally nice, we don't need painting. <laughs> painting. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, pack her hair. I will see together. I will see together. The picture I want you to see from here is to see a contention in the palace. There is a king called here. There is a Jezebel, and there is Obadiah. Three of them in the palace. The responsibility of these people for you is to maintain and cause the economy of a nation to grow. But can I submit to you, it was not why they are kings. The reason these people are in place is because there is a contention, and God is saying, who is going to win? Who is going to win? 
Ahab is more or less a, a, a lazy person, neutral person, looking for any, can battle any influences that comes on his way. And now Jezebel came in. Jezebel is not an Israelite, hope you know. Jezebel is from a country. Please stay with me, stay with me. I know on a Sunday morning this is not, but stay with me. Stay with me. I woke up this morning. I saw a revelation. Top notes, I don't even know where. Top stories in the newspaper. Man arrested for killing his colleague. And that's a police officer. And Lord said to me, that was Jezebel. That was Jezebel. Not, have you ever known how many people that have lost platform and opportunity, not because they are not gifted, but because there's a contention for relevance? Or you think it's everybody that asks kids that got the job? God is saying to us, body of Christ, that we're in a season in which he's concerned about what is happening in the national level, in every space and in every office. And he's saying that there are kings there and there are Jezebel there. Say, but I need Obadiah to represent my interest. And you have to be open-minded because when God says, go into the world and make disciples of not all the church, make disciples of all nations. And we are the one that God is willing to send to the heavens. He said, the Badaya might not have color, might not know how to open the, oh, oh, the mic. He said, but there is an emergency need of Obadiah, and I want to call them forth that they might increase in numbers. Obadiah will come to service and sit down on a Sunday. You are saying, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. I want a new job. Obadiah is saying, God, can you strengthen me that I might be able to retain your counsel in the position you are giving to me outside the four corners of the church? And you see what I'm saying? Can I even surprise you? Because I don't know the meaning of your name. The word Obadiah means a servant of God. So it's not a joke. So if I, when I was meditating, he said, when I say Obadiah, you say, hi, I'm a servant of God. Do it. Obadiah, I can't hear. Come on. Come on. I said, Obadiah, I need your hands up. So Obadiah, anywhere you are and you wake up in the morning, you go to that place or work or that vicinity or that house or that block of flat and you begin to feel that there is a strange spirit that is operating in that environment that is fighting your own spirit. You must be able to rise up and shout Obadiah. I can't hear you. Oh. Obadiah. Do you know the ground? Do you know the, because some of us under the sound of my voice now you will think the most powerful people in the nation are the prophets. No, you can say with this, this concept that even Jezebel has successfully know how to shut down the sound of prophets. A lot of attack. Not just on people like Elijah that are already in the peak of their ministry. I'm talking about people that are crying for expression of their calling, that they are struggling to bat it. Because Jezebel is on a mission to fight anyone that has a sense of calling. I don't know whether this is seeking, but I will preach it too. Stay with me, I will preach it. And God is saying, the way out is not intercessors. It's good. He said, the way out is that let your badayas increase. Let your badayas increase. Bible said, I will tell you five qualities of an obadiah. The last one is the most important to me because Obadiah's cannot be broke. <laughs> Obadiah's cannot be broke. It cannot be broke. So, reminding again a system of operation that it is operating even where we are right now, in the nation we're in right now. He said, there is an help who is a neutral leader. He said, there is an Obadiah who is a servant of the Lord. And there is a Jezebel. And all of them go to the same office. They do board meetings together. And all of them have job description. And all of them are helping me to promote the cause of a company. But 
everybody that comes in might call themselves an employee. But when Jezebel comes in, she came to control. She knows the strategic voice. She knows the right place. In fact, Jezebel has a budget in the government of the land. Because the Bible says she has 950 prophets that hit at the king's table. But Jezebel could not have a location to budget. So he has to use his resources to take care of 100 prophets. He has to divide them into two because he doesn't have a single accommodation that can take care of 100 people. Or badias cannot be broke. Are you tracking with me? Some of you, under the sound my but you thought the best of ministry is what PD is doing now. Uh, so ha, I can't wait for when PD will just call me to come and preach. Ha, I'll be, I'll be, I've been cooking that revelation. Oh, go and do it on Monday. You know, Monday, your war is not on the pulpit. It's in the public place. Make disciples of nations, not church. The light that we carry is the light that must sustain a prophet outside. God said, I need that. He said, because I don't want my voice to die in the land. So my voice is dying. You might not have the statistic of people that are backsliding. You might not have the statistic of people that have stopped doing ministry or we choose not to do ministry just because there is no about that. There's no bad eye. There's no bad eye. I won't count myself so to are you with me? Are you with me? I won't count myself so to say to be a professional person, but I have history of work. And I can tell you by experience that the spirit of Obadiah is powerful. He does a better job sometimes than a pastor. That there are people that I have affected and they have generated more results in their life than what I do on the pulpit. Just because of the spirit of Obadiah. When I say Obadiah, you know what to say? Come on, say Obadiah. In capital letter, Obadiah. Obadiah. If God cannot send some people to church, he sent them to the office waiting for you. And it's all the same light. The only difference is that message is organized here. But house there is not organized. I invited a lady for a meeting and she rejected it. And I was so sure, why would I invite you for a meeting and you won't accept it? Then I discovered that she was sick. What was the problem? She went to an hospital telling them that I'm, I'm not feeling fine. Instead of them to discover her for malaria, they gave her medication for typhoid. Then she went off a wire and she couldn't swallow any food. Practically her womb like ruptured and everything and she was bedridden for two years. It was a missing of Adaya in that office that Jezebel could be able to thwart that destiny. And the goal of the devil is to kill that woman. Then I started talking, I discovered that the solution to her problem or to boost her faith is finding somebody she believes in that can talk to God. Then I landed in that town. As I went straight to her, where she was, as I opened the door, her legs were vibrating. Her legs were vibrating. For me, I just thought this is just, you know, you know vibrating. But I knew that her, her faith level was high. Lay hands on her, pray upon her, encourage her, sit there for a few, few, few hours. I left the place. Less than probably two weeks later, her husband was just talking in the office about what she's passing through. And her boss said to him, why will your wife be passing through this and you won't tell anybody? And he said, what is the plan? They said, we are taking this lady to India. Within one week, they approved that money from the company to send him and his wife to, what they call it, to India. The woman is standing today. It was an Obad it was a Jezebel that, that created a wound. It was an Obadiah that released the resources. I said, Obadiah cannot be broke. Come on, say, Obadiah. This week, God will give you a location and we give you responsibility. He will tell you those he has allocated for you to support 
and it will give you the resources to do it. This is the condition for relevance we're talking about. That, can you imagine what your life would have been if I have rejected my calling? Can you imagine how, what, what would be in your heart now if I tell you that I don't want to pastor again? Because they are prophets. Hallelujah. For purpose of emphasis, if you ask me, why does God need Obadiah? Why does God need Obadiah? Let's not forget, please remember, Obadiah is not a person. He's a system. He's a way of thinking. He's a mindset. And if you check the face of scripture, you will see everybody, it's people coming here and there, having that same image. Are you with me? In this chapter, it could be a man. Can you imagine? A man of God stood up and said, by the word of the Lord, there will not be a rain in this land for three years, except by my word. Then when he finished the prophecy, he discovered that he was included in the prophecy too. That what will lead? Can, can you imagine? Can you imagine? That what, what will lead? Because it's so easy to prophesy. <laughs> say, come on, go deeper, prophet of God. <laughs> there will be doom, there will be earthquake, there will be, they, it, it now happens in the time in which we live. <laughs> but God has to raise Obadiah for him. If Obadiah cannot feed him in person, raven can feed him. If he cannot come in the form of a raven, can come in the form of a widow of Seraphat. Obadiah has to say Obadiah. It's a system. And their goal is specific. Do you know what God are you with me? This year, God will use you. This year, practically, you'll be a disciple. This year, there will be names you'll be able to say, Oh, thank God that my light shine over this person in 2024. Because there will be specific people in your life that if, if not that you understand this importance of revelation that God is displacing to you right now, you'll be wondering, I, I would have just ignored this. Because specifically, God's going to be putting names in your heart and giving you supply of knowledge and resources to help people like that. Nobody will die in your circle. Spiritually, naturally, nobody will go down your circle. Come on, say, so Obadiah, I'm a servant of God. I'm a servant of God. I'm a servant of God. Listen to me, friends. That one of the things that God will you most on it. It's not skyscraper. It's not the name of any country. It's not even human being. What God trails most on earth is his word and his ability to bring it to pass. That God speaks on this side and it comes to pass on the other side is what he trails the most. It's what he trails the most. And God is jealous over his word that when he says it, the same person he uses his vocal cord to express it, he wants that person to see be alive, to see the fruit of that word. Except the person derailed willingly from God. Not because somebody killed that person. On that person, God backslides. So to preserve the voice of God over the land and systems is the reason why God is increasing Obadiah. To preserve the word of the Lord. To sustain the word of the Lord among the nations. That's why God is preserving what? Obadiah. Obadiah. He knows Jezebel is on rampage. But they are not strong enough if I can raise Obadiah. Hallelujah. Jezebel can decide to threaten the prophet of God, but can't threaten Obadiah. Are you with me? Preserve the word of the Lord. Preserve. To keep the word of the Lord in the atmosphere. The country we came from, you need a building for church? Just use anyone. Just use anyone. Use anyone. Anyone. But the building that are listed for church in UK it might be less than 0.01 percent. That if you see anybody like the landlord of this place to say, I bought a property and I want to use it for church, it's because it's an Obadiah. Did you hear what? It's because it's an Obadiah, because it's not profitable. It's not profitable. Do the calculation yourself. It's not profitable. Because we have seen there is another church down the road there that they've 
At the outside, you know it's a church. Inside, it's flat. It's flat. Churches are turned to flat. Except you are no bad You understand that the goal and why I'm in a public place and a place of relevance is not just to make money, but there is a contention. And the contention is to make sure the voice of God is silent. The silence. Sometimes the warfare in your place of work is not just coming just because there's a there is a warfare for promotion or maintenance of job. No, no, it's because you are the voice. You're the voice. Oh, you have not faced witchcraft in the office before. I have. I have. I have. If you are not called or sent, don't go. Because you will come back wounded. But if you are not bad, you will go. Hallelujah. That the people that want to pull you down, <laughs> you will see their exit and supervise it. Because you're what? An Obadiah. Obadiah. Oh. I'm a servant of God. Let me, I don't know why God wants me to share this with you, but let me just bring this to you. There are four seasons in the life of an Obadiah. Four seasons. In the life of an Obadiah. And this is important because you need to know the season you're in, especially in 2024. Number one season is when you are in the training for greatness. Training for greatness. Training for greatness. Number two season is when you have what we call a taste for greatness. Number three season is when you have what we call a test, test for greatness. And number four season is when you have the trust of greatness, the trust of greatness. Training for greatness, test of greatness, test of greatness, trust of greatness. Hallelujah. Did you capture that? When you're in your season of training for greatness, now, the reason I don't, I, I, I want to be sure one of the reasons why God is bringing this is so that I can explain something very simple to you to understand. Because, 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 because if you understand the season you're in, it will help you a lot better. It will do a lot better. Better. When you're in a season of training for greatness, the best you can do with your life is to learn well. When you're in a season of training for greatness, the best thing you can do with your life is what? To learn well. So some of us, in one aspect or the other of our lives, this year is just a year of learning. It's a year of what? Learning. In which you empty yourself and say, Lord, fill me and fill me to the broom. And I notice that in life, God will always take us to a season whereby He begins to give us a taste of greatness. Listen to what I'm about to say now. Anytime you have the first breakthrough, never think it's a trust of greatness. Anytime, any kind of breakthrough. In case this month now, an amount entered into your account that have not entered before as a gift, don't receive it and say, hey, I'm there. It might, mm, it might be a test. A test and a test of greatness. You need to be sensitive enough that probably you might, you might, God might open a strange door of relationship into your life and, and you're wondering why this massive opportunity, the first thing you, won't, you will go there, you have to understand there is a test or a taste of greatness. Because sometimes, the word that God has spoken ahead of you, if I want to first of all see how you behave with it before it gets you into it permanently. Are you tracking with me? You trust in God for a man or a woman to a man to marry? Then God brings an image of that kind of person you desire to your way, and is a married man. It's a taste. And a taste of greatness. How will you treat that person? Are you tracking with me? Lord, increase me. And I want more. 
Then 5,000 pounds enter into your account in this first quarter I receive it for myself. <laughs> first quarter of the year, first quarter of the year, then God is just washing. Whether if you go to high street and somebody is asking for one pound, you won't have capacity to make it two pounds. It might be a taste of greatness or a taste of greatness. That even though the money can be in your account, it will you reduce or increase your prayer life. It might be a taste of greatness or a taste of greatness. Or probably that's when you will call them in Africa. We tell them the Lord has done it. You know, that, uh, let me show you. By the time I convert 1,000 into that, uh, I'll just go and just flex. I need to travel. I'm having a feeling. I need to quickly dash to Nigeria, man. Dash Nigeria. Can, can you can you rent a car for me? Just say uh, the man of God is coming. Is coming from UK. Maybe a taste. A taste of greatness is beautiful, because if you don't have a taste of greatness, you will, you won't know that what God has said has capacity to come to pass. Sometimes God 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 will keep you in training season. All of a sudden, He comes opens you up and give you an opportunity to show that you come by. You will just be like David that wakes up one morning, kick Goliath. And that's the only Goliath he will kick. He will have to come back to keep taking care of his father's sheep. It was a taste and a test of greatness. Hallelujah. When it's a test of greatness, you have to keep your full obedience. Full obedience. And to some of us, you are passed away again and again. Oh, PD, you've been preaching for years. When will the nature opens up? Is you are entering into a season of a trust of greatness. Because when nations open up or it doesn't open up, I will serve God. I've got to that level where it's him and him alone. And that's when you can be trusted with greatness. You will not feel any test of the spirit this year. Are you listening to me? I say you will not feel any test of the spirit. And some of you, you will taste greatness. Your amen is not born again. I said you will taste greatness. I said you will taste greatness in the name of Jesus Christ. It comes in a very simple way. You might have a desire and say, God, you know, and God, and God, and you know, it's God that put that desire in your heart that look, the kind of car you want to drive is Range Rover, and it's not Kana. Then somebody will just say, Can I park a Range Rover in your house for one month? I want to travel. It's a taste of greatness. You just pack it there for one. Then you will sit down. You will not get familiar with your future. You don't understand what I'm saying. That's what you just get. Oh, have you have you experienced? It? Because you just get familiar. Just get familiar. Get familiar. The man of God, you can just you can just go to a meeting of large people coming, and the man of God will just say, "Come, hold the mic for two minutes," and you stand before thousands of people. And say, hey, and God say, "That is how it looks like in the future." Drop the mic now. And go back and sit down. It's a taste. You, you don't understand. It's a taste of greatness. A taste of greatness. God said you'll be a CEO of a company. Then you join the company and you're in level one. Then all of a sudden there was an emergency. All the level six and level ten are having a meeting. And they call you. Wait, can, you can you come and say something about what you saw? Then you enter into the place. You see all of them. And they say, sit down. What do you have to say? It's just for two minutes they gave you. But when you sit down, God said, this is how your future looks like. Then you finish your report and you left. But with that imagination, it was, a, uh, it was a taste of greatness. It was a taste of greatness. It was a taste of greatness. A taste of greatness. Looking for that house. They say every house in UK is small. Small. And somebody now tell you, can you help me deliver something to somebody's house? Or can you pick the... Then, then you took it there and you start looking for the address. It was just entering one corner, one corner. Then you go to a place like a land that has no end. Then you just want to say, I'm asked to give this. He said, Can you come in for a cup of tea? Then you come in and you sat down. Then you saw, you saw a living room bigger than your whole flat. And they, and they say, Are you okay? He said, Do you want to say, I don't want tea? What I'm seeing now is bigger than tea. Then you leave the place and you walk out of the place and God say, Can you feel it? That was a taste. <laughs> that was a taste of greatness. You don't come, you, that's not a place you take picture. And say I was there. No, no, no. It's for your imagination. The way challenges begin to come, while you are trained, you say, I've seen how the future looks like. What does it look like? There are many men of people, we, we, you, you meet some men of God that looks like your future. The only thing you do with them is take picture. So you can put it on social media. Are you kidding me? It was a test. Taste. Can I pray for you again? This year, you will taste greatness. Amen. I said you will taste greatness. 
you will taste greatness. In the name of Jesus Christ. So God is saying there is a need for Obadiahs. These Obadiahs we're talking about are people that have been trained. They've tasted greatness. Are you with me? <laughs> they have been tested with greatness. Then they are not being trusted with greatness. And here comes a season like we're here in which Obadiahs and JCB are in the same office. And one is not permitted to resign for the other. And there is contention for relevance. That relevance is not how much money one is making. It's not even the job description in the office. That relevance is the ability to sustain the voice of the Lord in the land. And God says, I can't use prophets because I didn't trade them for palace. I can only use Obadiah. Who might not have callers, but they are the servant of God. The men and women that have trained, by virtue of checking his profile, even Obadiah can say before the prophet of God that does not lie prophetically, I am a servant of God and I fear the Lord. I fear the Lord. I might not have color, but I fear the Lord. I might not have many scriptures to quote. I might not have bullet points to give, but I fear the Lord. 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 I walk into a company <laughs> one day, and the lady that attended to me was being massacred by, by, by J.C. Bear in the same company. Apparently, even is a friend of the managing director that was sleeping with her. Abortions after abortions. But one day, they were saying, they said, everybody come together. They said, I want to do prayers Monday morning. They now mistakenly gave me the mic. He said, pray. So on the Monday morning, I walk with suits. Then I raised my voice. I began to pray. When I finished praying, my suit was wet on a Monday morning. But I changed the atmosphere. And the lady came to meet me. He said, I want to talk to you. That was the day I discovered there was an Obadiah over that life. That lady became born again, and she's still safety today in the office. Some of us are waiting for miracle on Sunday morning, but the miracle is during the week. Do you know how many people I cancer during the week aside from being a pastor? Because here, you need to be formal sometimes for you to impact people. But there, the light you carry is what we attract darkness. You don't need to preach because I know that if you say you go there to preach, you should understand that if it's God that gave you that job, it's not for salary alone. It's because you are an Obadiah. And unfortunately, Jezebel came to the company and he came with his prophets. 950 allocated budget for them from the company. Then you came. You despise your own. You have forgotten that you do good to everyone, especially those that are of, of God. You have forgotten. You forgot it. Then now you become a black person in leadership. You can't pull others up. You're saying to them, hey, 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 yeah, but it's not about color. You have to understand. You have to understand. Whereas JC Bear will employ them and train them. And you want them to be trained before you employ them. Or bad eye. Let me tie this together. Five qualities or portrait of an Obadiah. God will give you mighty platform this year to help people, to encourage people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me show you a scripture. I just saw this while I was um, praying now. Let me show you a scripture. Give us Jeremiah chapter 15 from verse 1 to 4. Jeremiah 15 verse 1 to 4. Hallelujah. Why they are bringing that up, let me tell you what, I, what, what happened, what happened um, two, two weeks ago, less than two weeks ago. They say, oh, Claude Nge celebrated a history making appointments. And appointment, she's the first black woman to be the 
president or CEO of Harvard University after 387 years. After 387 years, she was the first female, uh, no, not the first, first black woman, or first black to become president or CEO of Harvard University. Six months later, she was removed. She was an Obadiah, but there was Jezebel in the palace. Are you with me? This is no joke. The person that incited the accusation against her for her to be removed after six months, the same offense they said she committed, that guy's wife committed the same offense. Then you will know it's not about this thing. It's about a system and an atmosphere. So in case God gives you one, you must have a niche and make God relevant in it. That's what Obadiah Let me tell you, I'm saying to you prophetically, we're in a season that is Obadiah that God is raising to protect the prophets. Are you with me? That's what I'm saying. That God is raising to protect what? The prophets. Look at this scripture. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 1. It said, and the Lord said to me, though Moses and Samuel, those are mighty prophets before God, though Moses and I'm just saying for the first time that the hand of the Lord is upon you. I'm just saying it for the first time. That the hand of the Lord is upon you. And you will do well. In the name of Jesus Christ. They thus said the Lord, though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be, could not be towards these people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. Go to the next verse. Can you see how hungry God is? Look at it. He said, and it shall come to pass if they say unto thee, Whither shall we go forth? Say, Thou shalt say unto them, Thus said the Lord, such as of the dead to death, just as to sword to sword, and such as of famine to famine, and such as for captivity to what? To captivity. That's, that's not a good thing. Go to verse 3. Go to verse 3. He said, Now we are praying over them four, four kinds, said the Lord, the sword to slay, the dogs to tear, and the vows of the heavens and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. That is terrible. But do you know why God is doing that? It's in verse 4. Give us verse 4. It was as well. And I will cause them to be removed from all kingdoms of the earth because man, I say the son of Ezekiah, king of Judah, for that which he did in Jerusalem. In other words, there was no Obadiah in the palace. And somebody ruined everybody, and God has to join. Let me tell you, some of us might think, oh, the churches are so many. I come and say, oh, we don't need pastor, everybody to go. Let me tell you, if the voice of the Lord goes down in UK, everything goes down. Everything goes down. That's why God has to increase people to adjust policies. God has to increase people to support the servants of God. That the voice of God. And one of the major people that God is raising are the Obadiahs. And your name is on the list. I say your name is on the list. That will not be said to you that somebody cannot do the will of God because of resources. And the only thing you can do is to be showing levels with your resources. And I say that with every confidence by the Spirit of God. This is beyond tithe and offering. Beyond tithe and offering. That you pay the price. I hope you know that it's not only... I told you, Obadiah is a system. Let's do a calculation. Are you ready? How many people did Obadiah was feeding? 100, 50, 50. If our Bible says was feeding them with food and water, or he was feeding them with bread and water, that means it's just uh, one cost me for three years. Ah, let me speak to you, so I say, yeah. Just for the Lord to preserve his prophet over the land, and people were put in a position that they can only be eating bread and water, holy communion every day for three years in the cave. No, no social, no public, no, no family connection, just because God wants to preserve his word. Can you, can you see how terrible that is? Then, when Elijah showed up before God, God said, I have 7,000 people that have not bowed their knees. So there are 6,900 6, people that God is keeping also in that same ministry. Sponsored by Obadiah, but not the one in the palace. Are you understand what I'm saying? Because God will always pay the price to keep his hand over the nation. That's what I'm saying to you. There are not 7,000. There are 7,001 because Elijah is included. Hallelujah. When God speaks, 
and he has paid his word to come to pass, there is always a warfare for it on the head. And the devil is mad. When you scream, hey, there will be revival in the UK. The revival is coming to Europe. You think you just say word and you will just go. The resources must fund it. And that's why you can't be broke. You can't be broke. We are more than having passport. We are more than having mortgages or having a car. We are instrumental to the cancer of God. When God could not find a bad in UK, he sent blacks here. And we are not here just to make profit and go out and come in the same way they have been doing. We are here to make a difference. We came with our God too. Obadiahs. 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 Five portraits of Obadiah so that we can run on. Number one is every Obadiah must have the fear of God. <laughs> Every Obadiah must have the fear of God. Are you see there? Every Obadiah must have the verse must have the fear of God. Number two, every Obadiah must be skillful. Obadiah said, I fear the Lord. The Bible called him an administrator. Somebody that qualified to serve the king. An administrator. Many skills are needed for Obadiahs. But people's skill is very critical. Everybody, please look up. Software changes every day. There's regular updates. New skis. Today's project management. Tomorrow is uh, um, performance management. Analyze data and all of that. But one thing I must, you must understand. People's ski does not have a replacement. And let me tell you, when nobody and Jezebel stand up, the one that knows people is visible to all. Are you listening to me? I said, when Obadiah and Jezebel stand, the one that loves the people is visible to all. So, as an Obadiah, you can develop every of that gift, but people gift. Ability to genuinely relate and accept people is critical. It's an edge. Because love is genuine. Love can be seen. It's traceable. It's touchable. To every Obadiah, has that skill, people's skill. That's one of the things that will make people to say you can't leave this job no matter what you have done because we want to. Without you, there's no peace in the department. So Badaya does not just fear the Lord. He what? He has people's skill. Number three, profile of an Obadiah is that he has spiritual stamina. Every Obadiah must have spiritual stamina. To be doing meeting with JCB every Monday morning is not a joke. <laughs> it's not a joke. Actually, when you know they don't like you. Yeah, not a joke. You must have spiritual stamina. Not just spiritual stamina to be in the same system with strange spirit or JCB, but also spiritual stamina to remain loyal to the king. You know what it means for you to be an administrator of a king when there are three years family? You need it. Spiritual stamina. Spiritual stamina. Spiritual stamina. Number four qualities of an Obadiah, or portrait of an Obadiah, is that Obadiah needs a platform or a position to execute the cancer of God. I believe personally, before this year is over, some of you will come, and what God would have done in your life will be practically the portrait of an Obadiah. I believe, I believe the portrait of an Obadiah. In the platform. Number one, what? Number one must have the fear of God. Number two, people's skills. Number three, number four, a platform a position to execute the cancer of God. Number five, which for me is one of the reasons for this series, is every Obadiah. Must have resources. 
We cannot be an Obadiah and be broke. Obadiah cannot be broke. Money enough to feed the servants of God. Money enough to feed the servants of God. Money enough to feed the servants of God. Obadiah cannot be broke. Cannot be broke. I just hope somebody this year will make a covenant with God. And said, I am part of the people that will fund your agenda in 2024. Set the budget, share an allocation for me, and give me grace to be part of it. Hallelujah. The man of God was running a conference that I know definitely runs into much millions. And said, so how does he fund that conference? He said, nobody funds the conference or funds the church. On Titan offering. No, he said ministry is sponsored. When I heard that, I know it's only Obadiahs that can do this. Can do that. Can do that. Can do that. Can do that. I know you shall see we're trying. Some of us are tithing, some of us are giving offering. But you know where we are now. It's not a function of collation of Titan offering. No, it's because there are Obadiahs. No, Obadiahs. But badass cannot be broke. Badass cannot be broke. November last year, after we are spent, and I just woke up in the morning, and Lord was saying to me, it was so clear. I was saying to me, I said, hey, 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 preserve my badass. You know, pres not preserve, preserve my prophets. And he told me, he said, two people, he said, put them on salary in 2024. So initially, I told my wife, I said, I was going to get that for. <laughs> so I was just be thinking, okay, if it's the will of God, it's the seed, bring the seed. Even by the time I entered 2024, my finances was not, was not stable. And I said, okay, let's do it. So I called this old guy and said, let's, we are not postponing this, credit our accounts. Do you know that what I gave to one of them, somebody credited me back last night, this night. Is that the same figure that I give one of them credit back? Uh, oh, but that else cannot be broke. I'm not saying that to encourage you. I'm just telling you that this thing, it's not that it was, it's the burden of the law for this season. It's the burden of the law for this season. This prophet must not die. This one that we are happy that they are eating bread and water. And the water. If you eat bread and water, can you prophesy? <laughs> can you prophesy? Can you prophesy? A pastor said to me, he said, he said, he said, he said, I have I, I saw an opportunity in Colchester University. He said, and I have people there that will let's go and start campus fellowship. And he was so excited about it. Then he went by the car he drives. Say, this car needs prayers. More than even the place we're going. Say, so let it not be that I carry car. And they say, we have started praise and worship. I'm still changing tires. Changing tires. And that vision went down because there is no Obadiah. Wow, which when he was, he was capturing that in his mind and said, this is the will of God. Someone would have just called and said, hey, Pastor, what do you need to get this done? That would have been an Obadiah. Do you think people like that will be broke? Do you think people like that when they get to eternity? Have you forgotten that the reason for Christianity is to win so? Have we forgotten that this thing is not about how to fill our pocket, but how to expand the cancer of God among the nations? Have you forgotten that the goal of the Father still remains the same, to make disciples of all nations? That whatever it costs to make that happen, Obadiah must be able to supply it. Let me tell you, anybody that have relationship with Christ must not be hungry around you in 2024. Did you hear what I'm saying? Anybody that has relationship with Christ must not be hungry around you in 2024. Must not be hungry around you in 2024. I'm not talking about selfish people. Somebody still called me yesterday and said, oh, I, have, I, I needed some money. My baby doesn't have deserving that. And when I checked that phone, I remember two, three years ago, that somebody calls and they keep calling, but it's just to buy cigarettes and whatever. There's a strategy by which they look for charity organizations and they just call them to collect money from them. I'm not talking about those ones. You have the assignment to say. 
when somebody genuinely is a servant of God, that knows the voice of God, have relationship with God, no matter what the challenge they are passing, they must not be hungry if you are an Obadiah. So are you with me? Does anybody res- we want to respond to a word like this this year? Hallelujah. <laughs> that the voice of the Lord will not be scarce in 2024. That the church of Christ in made will not beg for survival. We call forth new oil over our badias. Let the resources flow. Let the platforms be open. Our badias will not be afraid. They will not be tired. They will not be broke. Our badias will not lose their job. Even in 2024. This is the cancer of God. Lift up your voice and just pray for a few minutes. Mampose feleke proko super la gabosha. Mampalo se vege de proko super la capaya balataya. Mando se ke pala cosa vra bachanda. Membo su ke peleke te proko zabaya. Increase in obadias. Increase in obadias. Increasing over that. You are the one the Lord has sent. You are the one the Lord will use. You will not be broke. You will be skillful. The fear of the Lord will rest mightily upon your heart. God will give you greater, better platforms to execute the counsel of God. The voice of God will not die. Amen. The voice of God will not go down in the United Kingdom. The voice of the Lord will not reduce in Europe. God. We cause men to rise. We increase up a dias among the nations. The men might be supplied with needs, and the voice of the Lord might be sustained over the community. Let the Lord show us mercy. Makabala to vege de bo shapala. Meke pako to vege de baka shapaka tabala bosha. If you will help me, Lord, if you will help me, Lord, if you will help me, Lord, I will assist your servant. If we bring you supply, oh God. We use it for your purpose and your agenda. Master in the name of Jesus. Ask the Lord for the fear of the Lord to rest upon our heart in different platforms and offices we find ourselves. We will not play gimmicks. We will not play gimmicks. We will not play gimmicks. We stand for what we believe. We stand for the truth. We stand for the counsel of God to prevail. Increase in Obadiah. Increase in Obadiah. Increase in Obadiah. Can you ask God for platforms? Uh, platforms for relevance. Platform for relevance. Uh, ask God for leadership opportunities. Uh, ask God for where people are that he might give you opportunity to increase your influence in 2024. In the name of Jesus, I just don't want to walk I want to walk where I can implement the cancer of God. I can assist and help people. Increase in Obadiah. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. How I many of you resonate with this word? Resonate with this word. I want to pray the last prayer, friend. That Lord, in this society, increase Obadiah. In every office, increase Obadiah. In every complaint, let that be increased in Obadiah. In the name of Jesus, political sector, increase in Obadiah. Preserve up the agenda of God. Preserve up the word of the Lord. Preserve of the cancer of the spirit. Let there be increase in Obadiah's over this society from street to street, from house to house, company to company, government to government. Increase in Obadiah. We open doors for them. We open doors. We open doors for them. In the name of Jesus. Increase in Obadiah. The contention for relevance. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you praise and honor.
in Jesus' name. The Lord will not use a man and dump him. The Lord will not use a man and dump him. This might be the second week of 2024. But if you respond to this word, respond to this word, by the time this year is over, the Lord would have poured upon you resources that are beyond your budget. As you place your heart, your hands upon your heart, online, on site, I pray for increase in resources. That your value will attract words. The Lord is giving you ability to receive. Some of you know to give, but you don't know how to receive. Grace to receive. Grace to receive. New jobs. New open doors. New opportunities. Fresh information. Useful insights. Leadership. Places of relevance. Business opportunities. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ability to receive is released upon you in the name of Jesus. You will not be broke. You will not be broke. You will not be broke in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Father, we stand on this altar and we pray for every Obadiah across the nations, especially in UK. Whether public service or government or any organization which they are, Yes, you send them here, but the warfare was, is strong. And they're even at the point of giving up, saying, I can't continue in this place again. But your purpose is still upon their life. We have strength, inner stamina. One, Nirugu and Kuba. They will not be a victim of error. The Bible says, He that digs a pit will fall into it. And he that roll a stone will be the same, be crushed by the same stone. Let every spirit that rises against the counsel of God over Obadiah, let them come down in the name of Jesus. Strengthen your people. And above all, let your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. I mean a clap offering. A clap offering. Hallelujah. Let's have a seat in his presence. Wow, what a word. God bless you, Pastor. So many things was just going in my head. I think I'll go back and now uh, watch this message again. The Lord is raising up Adias. Because the church of God, especially in the UK, we need it. You know, we, 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 we are doing well praying for revival. But the same people God is bringing to revive the nation came to the nation and discovered they need help. I pray God will give us the spirit of Obadiahs in the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor, God bless you. Online, thank you for joining us today. I believe you have been blessed. And I pray the Lord will continually empower you, strengthens you. And wherever nations you are coming, you are watching us from you will be an Obadiah in the nations in the name of Jesus. Every resources needed, the Lord will give to you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's time to give our tithes and our offering. You know, years ago, when I was a teenager, I had the statement that offering and tithes don't... Um, when you see projects in church, it's not funded by offering and tithes. Now I know better. But the Lord will still have us to give our tithes and our offering. And in his influence, church, you know, I draw a lot of reflection. I'm like, we take him with the basket, not around. I hope he's not debarring people from giving. Because we, as a people, were given pe people. So I don't want to believe <laughs> that it's affecting our giving. You know, sometimes when you see a, 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 a baskets, when I was younger anyway, the reason I will give is because they pass the basket. But I believe that we are church people. We have grown over time. So that's why we don't take baskets around. But that shouldn't stop you from giving. God expects you to give your tithes. And God expects you 
to pay your offering. You pay your offering, pay your, your tithes, you give your offering. You can't, if you are a mature person, you can't do tithes and not do offering. And you can't do offering and not do tithes. Amen. But God will help us in Jesus. You know, that, that is, you know, offering time is one time that I don't really like to talk about. But if we believe in it, we must teach people too. Because that is, I can see, one of our secrets. You can't come to church empty-handed. Even if you can't, even if it's a pound, you can't come to church empty-handed. Hallelujah. And I pray God we, t- we help our understanding in this aspect in the name of Jesus Christ. Announcements. Our prayer section for this week has been changed because of the instruction we've received from the Lord to wait on him for increase. So, Monday morning till Saturday this week, we'll be praying from 7 to, sir? Yes, Monday to Saturday, 6 to 7 a.m. Sunday will be 10 a.m. So, the same way we did today. Today, this morning, we were already here. Some of us, I was already here by 9. 10 o'clock, we start praying. Pray. No, that will be on Sunday, but from tomorrow, 6 a.m. You know, I re- a man of God said something. Was it during the week or last week? He said, you are kinda, if God cannot change your time. <laughs> he said, you are a kinda Christian. If God cannot wake you up at night and say, pray for one hour. So this week, God is asking us to wake up. Some of us, for me, I don't wake up until 7. 7 o'clock, I wake up. 7.30, I'm in the bathroom. That is my... Not because I slept from last night into 7. So don't imagine. <laughs> my service was just sleeping. I woke up in the course of the night to pray anyway. So I wake up. My normal time is 7 o'clock. I stand up from the bed. I've, I've done some prayers. So don't say I just stand up and went to... I have my routine. But God is changing that this week for me. And I believe that as if for everybody. Because I don't want to be carnal. He said, if God cannot ask you to shift, <laughs> you're a can. I said, no, I'm not going to be a can. Christian. So this week, six to seven, let's adjust our normal to his normal because he has made up his mind to bless us and we have to insist on it. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. So 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. we'll be praying. Hallelujah. And I pray the Lord will answer our prayers in Jesus' name. So because of that, we'll have a prayer meeting on Monday and on Friday. Okay? We won't have it in the evening. Yes. Our normal prayer meeting 9 o'clock tomorrow and 8 p.m. on Friday just because of this. Okay? Then Thursday, we'll have grabs on Thursday. (laughs) Pastor will be live on Instagram on Thursday. Please make sure you join. Something big and great is happening on that platform. And I pray that as much as everyone is connecting all over the world, we as a church will be blessed in this in this meeting in the name of Jesus Christ. Saturday, the children will be having their class. I will encourage everyone to make sure that Saturday... Your children are part of the Sunday, <laughs> part of the children's class. You know, I was saying to myself, I said, Sim, the greatest gift you can give to a child is God, not British passports. No, I've seen, as in, in my clinic, I've seen some things, especially among African children and i'm like god something is happening the devil is fighting some of us think we have taken them away from danger coming to uk but not knowing that there is a the atmosphere is even mightier than where they came from but what we secure their future is the god that they know and we enc- and not for them to join some are joining very late i'll be addressing that in february some are joining very late. This class can start at 5.30 and you are joining 5.40. You can't... <laughs> there is an adage in Nigeria that says that you can't bend a dry fish. But for a fresh fish, you can do it in any shape. So these children are fresh fish. So permit me to mold them. So February, beyond Bible, I'll be teaching them ethics. So I'll be doing that. And children class in Feb will be starting in February for zero to five. 
also by the grace of God. So I'll be doing that. I'll trust God that more people will join me. So they, because I discover that we have uh, Christians, but not disciplined Christians. And because something, something went wrong in some of the adults' lives, so these children must not turn out to be indisciplined Christians. So I'll be addressing one or two things in February. And I tell you, by December, you will see your child and you will say, thank God for them attending children class. Because something with jobs is dropping. They'll be picking discipline. They'll be picking trust. They'll be picking the spirits of the Holy Spirit. They'll become better Christians. And in 10 years, I want a child. I want Abel already to see me in 10 years from now or 20 years from now when she has her family. I say, thank God for Pastor Lydie. <laughs> because for me, that's what I do for my children, uh, my, my Sunday school teachers that helped me. Because that, in that place, you get better. Okay? And I pray God, we pray for your child, but also prepare them for this class. It's 30 minutes, but it's an investment. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. No more announcements. Shall we stand up and speak into our week? There is contention out there. There is contention. Sometimes I get into the office, it's cold, but I will remove my shoe and speak. Hallelujah. I will speak. See, was it on Thursday? I went for home visit to give some people injection, and I came home and I was sick because there is contention out there. There is spirit out there. There is a there are people that they want you to take their their, their, their sickness so that they will be whole. There are people sending names to Africa and say, "Can you can the prophets pray about this?" Can they? people are paying prophets, and you you can't pray. A colleague said to me, I, I, I have Pastor and I, our father, I send names to. Yes, and you as a Christian, you can't pray, you can't come. There is contention out there. You can't just live your life anyhow. Commit the weak into the hands of God. Speak into the weak. You, because they smile at you, you think they like you? No, there is contention out there. There is contention out there. Being just a kind of Christian, there is contention out there. Don't take that smile as a verdict that you are loved, you are accepted. There is contention out there. It's between Jezebel and Obadiah. People are doing so many things. And you, you, as a Christian, you can't command your day. You can't wake up in the morning to pray. You can't command your week. HIC, we can do better. Prophesy into your week. Say, this week, I rise above pain and depression. Yes. No pain, no shame. My children go to school and they come back well. Other people send their children to school with a red mark on their head. But you send your, school just, your, your children to school just with lunch back. No prayer, nothing. You can't lay hands on your children in the morning. You can't bless them in the morning because you have to go to work. And some, in, so some people from another religion can put a mark on their children. No wonder they are doing better. Contention out there. Speak to your, if you can't pray for yourself, pray for your children. As they go to school this week, they excel. They excel. They do well. They teach, but their teacher loves them. Their teacher, uh, their teachers favor them. They have extras. Yes, even if it's extra crayon, extra whatever, they have extras. They are not just any child in that school. Maliba Santa Helica Santa Hele Sokole. I am not a candidate for ambulance this week. The police will not knock on my door this week. I speak the peace of Jehovah. This is my week. Mali pasente hele bo shinda hele kasinda hele basakala ye bo sukuli kese kele kese. The mark of the Lord is upon me. The hand of the Lord is upon me. At work I excel. I do my assessments well. Mali kese kele kese kele kese kele. The wrong patients will not come into my clinic. I am blessed of the Lord. The hand of the Lord is upon me. 
Malike Sente Yelebo Sokoli Basinda, speak into your week. One more minute, speak, speak. Malika Sakali Basinda Yelebo Sokoli Kesekele. I prosper in this land. Thank you, Chief. In Jesus' mighty name. Everyone looking for another job. Everyone looking for another job. Lift up your hands well. Everyone looking for another job or a better job. Father, in the name of Jesus, we trust you this week that you will grant us access to knowledge. Let the limitation be broken. New opportunity be released. In the name of Jesus. Remember your mercy and your love towards us. And let that be supply. In the name of Jesus. As your people begin to search for new jobs this week, grant them open eyes. Right information. Right connection. Proper preparation. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Ali, let's share the grace together and fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, it's goodness and mercy pursuing us all the days of our lives, and we, the house of the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. I want to shout.